Hello everybody. We're going to talk here about anterior spinal artery occlusion. I could have just as easily called this anterior spinal artery stroke because this is a stroke. It is a vascular disease that results in ischemia to the, uh, to, to the nerves. So this is indeed a stroke and uh, this is a uh, talk on a set of spinal cord lesions, uh, including syringomyelia, subacute combined degeneration, bronze sequard, uh, this, which is ASA occlusion, cauda equina syndrome, and spinal compression. So if uh, you have not reviewed the neuroanatomy, it could be useful to do that. I do have a talk up on uh, neuroanatomy, particularly focusing on the uh, tracts, the motor tracts and sensory tracts. Uh, so the corticospinal tract is our major motor tract. Uh, it projects downward, uh, starting from the motor cortex. Uh, involves two nerves. The first nerve, which starts at the motor cortex and projects all the way down uh, through the spinal cord, uh, decussating at the uh, lower medulla and projecting down to uh, its site of exit. That's the upper motor neuron. Where it exits is uh, where it synapses with the lower motor neuron, and then that lower motor neuron travels to the muscle. The DCML tract uh, is uh, a sensory tract, so it travels uh, from proximal to central. Uh, it goes from the periphery to the brain. So there's a first order sensory neuron that conveys the uh, signal from the site of sensation to the, uh, to, to the, uh, through the posterior horn of the spinal cord. It synapses and then travels up the posterior column and this decussates at the superior medulla and from the superior medulla it continues and travels to the contralateral thalamus and at the thalamus then it synapses uh, and this is a third neuron and this finally travels to the somatosensory cortex. The DCML tract is responsible for fine touch and proprioception. And then the spinothalamic tract, finally, is uh, another tract of uh, sensation. And uh, this tract is similar to the DCML tract in that it is for sensation and that it includes three nerves. However, it's different in that uh, when the nerve comes in through the posterior cord, the primary, or posterior horn, rather, uh, it synapses right away and crosses right away. So it doesn't wait to the medulla to cross, it, it decussates right away. And um, from there, that second order neuron travels up to the contralateral thalamus, uh, contralateral, contralateral to where it entered, uh, and uh, then synapses yet again, and then travels to the somatosensory cortex. And the spinothalamic tract is responsible for uh, relaying information regarding temperature and pain. Uh, and crude touch. So for a more complex, uh, more detailed talk about these tracts, you can go and see uh, the, talk to that the talk that focuses on neuroanatomy. Uh, so this is just a sort of uh, look at how these uh, tracts relate to one another. Uh, this is ju these are just uh, cuts of spinal cords. Uh, they're not necessarily um, in, uh, in perfect scale here. Uh, but just to show that there is uh, crossing at the medulla for both the DCML and the corticospinal tract. Okay, so what is, um, okay, um, this is another one. Okay, so what is anterior spinal artery syndrome? Anterior spinal artery syndrome, which is a stroke to the ASA, an occlusion to the ASA, is a, uh, is basically an occlusion to the anterior two-thirds of the spinal cord. So that's a big deal because the anterior two-thirds of the spinal cord carry our corticospinal tracts and our spinothalamic tracts. Remember the spinothalamic tract being that which conveys sensory information regarding pain and crude touch and temperature and the corticospinal tract being our motor tract. So if you have a stroke to the anterior spinal artery, you will lose everything below that level, and that's a big deal. 
Uh, so you'll have uh, not only a paralysis, but you'll also have a, uh, a loss of sensation. However, you will have some sparing in sensation because your DCML tract is not affected. Your DCML tract is fed by the posterior spinal artery, and the posterior spinal artery um, is uh, completely separate from the anterior spinal artery. Um, so the DCML conveys information regarding uh, vibration, proprioception, and so position sense and vibration sense is actually spared in anterior spinal artery syndrome. So this is rather easy to uh, detect clinically because you'll have patients that have no sensation to crude touch, but when you strike a tuning fork and place it on their foot, they will actually be able to feel that. So, as mentioned, the anterior spinal artery provides blood supply to the anterior two-thirds of the spinal cord. The superior supply, so there are two arteries or two sets of arteries that supply uh, our circulation to the anterior spinal artery. The superior supply comes from various vertebral artery branches, and the inferior supply roughly below T4 is uh, comes actually directly from uh, branches off of the thoracic aorta. So these branches come together and uh, that's called the artery of Ademkiewicz. So maybe you remember that from some obscure anatomy question during first year of medical school. Uh, but you do have two supplies for the anterior spinal artery and this becomes important because right in the middle uh, where uh, is T4? So everything above T4 is primarily supplied by your superior supply, your vertebral artery branches that go into your anterior spinal artery, and everything below T4 is primarily supplied by the artery of Ademkiewicz. So if you have systemic hypoperfusion, uh, meaning that you, uh, you, you lose both, uh, you're going to have uh, a T4 watershed area, meaning that this is actually the area that is least perfused. And so any kind of uh, uh, hypoperfusion, uh, is this, this area is going to be the most, uh, the, the most affected. So T4 is a very common area to see anterior spinal artery stroke. Not necessarily occlusion, but stroke uh, due to uh, due to um, hypotension. So the usual causes, as with most strokes, this is a stroke, is uh, atherosclerosis, as well as hypertension, diabetes mellitus, all the causes that contribute to that. Other causes include vasculitis, hypotension, as mentioned, aortic dissection, and uh, iatrogenic causes. Uh, just because we do get a supply from the thoracic aorta, if you're having vascular surgery, particularly um, aortic surgery, this can actually uh, happen due to mishaps during surgery. Prominent features of anterior spinal artery occlusion, as you can probably uh, imagine, include bilateral weakness or paralysis below the level of the lesion. That's also going to cause a loss of sphincter tone. Uh, and then bilateral sensory loss below the lesion with sparing of proprioception. So the DCML is not affected. Overall, spinal strokes such as ASA are un, uh, uncommon overall, but uh, the ASA stroke is the most common of spinal strokes. There are other spinal strokes that can happen, but uh, they're outside the spectrum of the USMLE. So what you should remember about anterior spinal artery strokes is that you lose your, uh, your spinal thalamic and your corticospinal pathways, but the DCML is spared. So what is the history of the patient with ASA strokes? Most of them, of course, have risk factors for stroke, like in any other stroke. Uh, so particularly hypertension, diabetes, uh, hypercholesterolemia. And interestingly, in ASA strokes, unlike other strokes, we see radicular pain. So we see pain distributed to specific dermatomes. So pain is a frequent a frequent finding in the anterior spinal artery stroke that we don't see in some of the cerebral artery strokes.
Another risk factor for ASA stroke is a present or recent meningeal infection, and then most patients are uh, older adults, just like in other strokes. The symptoms, as mentioned before, include a flaccid motor paralysis and a sensory paralysis below the level of the lesion with the salient sparing of position sense and vibration. That's your dead giveaway. And then, of course, the radicular pain to arms and legs, depending on the level of the lesion. Fever may be present, particularly if there is a, uh, an infectious cause behind the ASA stroke. As far as diagnosis, because of the very, uh, very conspicuous symptomology, as far as uh, where we lose, uh, how we lose motor uh, and, uh, and spinothalamic uh, uh, pathways, but we don't lose DCML. The diagnosis is often pretty obvious clinically. However, it should be followed by an MRI to confirm the uh, diagnosis and to exclude other possible causes, less likely causes, but possible causes, including uh, neoplasm. Routine labs should also be undertaken uh, to consider infection, uh, which can be a cause of ASA stroke. And younger patients uh, may present with ASA stroke, rarely, uh, but younger patients and those with fewer risk factors should be worked up for vasculitis, which is another possible cause of ASA stroke. So you can do that by getting uh, an erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is sort of your basic uh, indicator of inflammation, and then an ANA, which is an indicator of uh, of vasculitis and, uh, and other autoimmune diseases. And that can be worked up further based on the findings. So treatment for ASA stroke, uh, unfortunately by the time symptoms arise, it's generally too late for a curative therapy. Uh, but these patients do need to be admitted to the hospital as any stroke patient. All patients where you suspect an ASA stroke the next best step in, uh, in treatment is going to be to administer aspirin, uh, unless it's contraindicated, because this is a stroke. Unfortunately, we can't use TPA or any other kind of clot busters in ASA stroke. During hospitalization, because these patients do need to be monitored, they, of course, should be on some kind of DVT prophylaxis uh, because they are going to be immobile. And most of them are going to need long-term anticoagulation for DVT prophylaxis because most of these patients will be immobile uh, in a long, on a long-term basis. And as far as outpatient therapy, it's going to be supportive and uh, mostly uh, looking at their, uh, at their paralysis and uh, degree of weakness that they have. Uh, and it's going to involve a risk reduction based on their risk factors that cause them to have the ASA stroke, and physical therapy uh, to maximize their functionality. Some patients do make a degree of recovery, uh, but uh, that's certainly a, a minority uh, that make a significant degree of recovery. This is usually, this usually results in, uh, in uh, a, uh, a lower body paralysis, if not uh, quadriparesis.